There are way too many prime lenses to choose from, but the 85 millimeter is actually a really good one. And here are five reasons why. In this video, I'm gonna be talking in full frame terms. So that's an 85 millimeter on a full frame camera. The first reason an 85 millimeter prime lens is awesome is because of the supreme separation from the background that you can achieve with this lens. You might already know this, but every lens has a maximum aperture. And the lower that number is, the more light the lens can let in. So you'll commonly see an 85 prime lens come with a maximum aperture of like f2, f1.8, or f1.4. And not only does that mean it lets in a lot of light, it also has a very shallow depth of field when you're using the lens at those apertures. So that means a more blurry background when you're shooting subjects that are close to the camera. And higher focal lengths, so focal lengths that are more zoomed in, like the 85, also mean that you're going to get a shallow depth of field. So naturally the combination of these two mean a very, very shallow depth of field. And yeah, that is the correct terminology. And the results speak for themselves. This is put to use really well for portraits, allowing the viewer to focus in on the face and not be distracted by the background. It's great when you want control over the viewer's attention. You really want to direct them, direct their focus into one part of the image. And it's also a great way to frame your subject. You can put objects between the camera and the subject that you're taking a photo of to frame them. And because they're all really super blurred out, they're not distracting at all. Shooting through leaves or doorways or glass can give your photo this kind of voyeuristic feel and the 85 millimeter focal length is perfect for that. Being closer to your subjects creates something called perspective distortion, where features look elongated and not natural. And it's not always a bad thing in photography, but if you want your subjects features to look more true to life, then try standing back a few meters. Now that you're further away, you can use your 85 to get a nice zoomed in shot, a portrait of your subject without that perspective distortion. Have a look at the difference that an 85 millimeter makes to our subject's face in these two photos here. The next reason why the 85 is an awesome lens is because it's usually much more portable than a 70 to 200. The more zoomed in your lens is, the larger it needs to be to let in light. And that's just physics. There's nothing we can do about that. 85 millimeters, in my opinion, is the sweet spot. 85 millimeter lenses can still be relatively small while still letting in a lot of light. Check out this 85 millimeter 1.4 lens from Sigma. It's much lighter than the equivalent 70 to 200 and you get a much shallower depth of field at 85 millimeters because of its light gathering maximum aperture of 1.4. Having a lighter kit is always a good idea. It's gonna save your back, especially if you like taking photos on long hikes. It forces you to think in focal lengths. When using a zoom lens, it's really easy to get into the habit of just standing wherever and zooming in and out until you're happy with your shot. And for this reason, you never really get familiar with one focal length. And focal length is actually really important because as I mentioned before, if you're too close to your subject, you can cause these perspective issues. Carrying a prime lens forces you to think in these specific focal lengths. I've shot so much with an 85 millimeter lens that I can pretty much tell as soon as I walk into a room, how far away I'm going to need from a person, say for example, to get a waist up shot. So I know a lot of photographers will have different opinions, but in my opinion, I just think it's a lot better to think in focal lengths versus getting used to using a zoom and just not really paying attention to your focal length. However, this does not mean that you should only carry an 85 millimeter around. If you choose to go down the route of owning prime lenses, I think you should own a few different prime lenses. Maybe try out a 24, a 35, 50 millimeter lens, see which ones work for you, which ones you like best. I've also made a video helping you guys choose which one is right for you, which I'll link down below. When you think in focal lengths and you go to pick up a lens, you do it with intentionality and purpose. For example, when I wanna tell a story, I wanna give a lot of information, I'm gonna use a 35 millimeter, get a nice wide shot. If I want the viewer to focus in on one detail specifically and get rid of all the other details by blurring out the background, then I'm gonna go for the 85. Okay, last reason is limitations equal creativity. Sometimes it can be a really good idea to just leave all the other lenses in the bag. Limiting yourself to just using the 85 means you only get one perspective. And this comes with its limitations. You are forced to shoot from further away. And for me, this can actually inspire me to be more creative. Shooting not for the freedom, but for the challenge. And this is actually true of all prime lenses. They don't zoom in and out. They don't give you different perspectives. Sometimes when you're on a shoot, you're at a location, you have a model, you just have way too 
many options. Well, you could go over here and shoot with a wide lens or you could go over here and shoot with something completely different. And you become so overwhelmed with all of the options that you have that you tend to lose inspiration and motivation. There's just too many possibilities and we worry that we won't pick the right one. When you limit yourself to one lens, you begin to see the world differently and you're really only focused on one problem, which is how do I make an awesome photograph with this one tool? There's been so many times that I've limited myself to only using one focal length and it has caused me to take a photograph that I never would have thought of. So that's five reasons why the 85 is an awesome lens, not just for photography, but for filmmaking too. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out my preset pack down in the description below if you like the way I edit my images and I will see you guys in the next video.